What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great start to your week so far, and, of course, testing negative for all of those viruses that are out there. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Virus Update for Monday, December 29th, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. There's a lot of viruses, COVID, flu, RSV, norovirus. Yeah, they're all making people sick right now, and others are as well. You need to be informed of what's going on. That's what I do here on my channel each and every day. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. Already, we do have a very busy news day today. We have a ton of things to talk about, such as this first story, where, you know, I often hear people refer to COVID saying, oh, it's just like the flu. Well, let me tell you something. Just like the flu, eh? Well, the flu can be very serious, too. Yes, get this. In Alabama, an 11-year-old boy has died after battling a severe case of the flu. Yes, this is in Alabama. And uh, this happened on Saturday evening after complications, again, from a severe case of the flu, family members tell WBRC, which is a news station down there. So yes, when I hear people say COVID is just like the flu, well, the flu can get very serious as well, and even kids are dying of the flu this year. Yes, pediatric deaths are occurring. There were a ton of them last year, and I got a feeling we are really headed in the wrong direction this year. All right, again, for those who say, just like the flu when it comes to COVID, Here's another example of flu being very serious. Mickey Lee, 35, who starred on Big Brother Season 27, dies after series of cardiac arrest, series of cardiac arrest from flu complications. And yeah, so um, the flu this year, right now, it is really serious, and you really need to be aware that uh, flu is causing deaths right now. Uh, Flu cases are really running rampant across the United States. Here's South Carolina. Widespread flu activity in South Carolina is prompting local hospital restrictions. Thousands of cases of flu and one death in South Carolina, low country reported in week leading up to the holidays. A lot of the data we're looking at right now is lagged because of the holidays. Uh, we're going to see these gaps fill in probably after the new year, probably next week, is where we'll see data really start to fill in. CDC is going to update some of their data tomorrow on Tuesday. But yes, South Carolina is now listed at widespread activity when it comes to flu. So that is not good whatsoever. Now we go a little bit further north to North Carolina. Novon Health announces new visitor restriction due to respiratory illness surge. Novon Health has announced a new visitor restriction due to the recent surge in respiratory illness. According to Novon, starting on December 30th at 7 a.m., visitors under the age of 13 will not be permitted unless seeking care or in other special circumstances. This restriction applies to all Novon Health hospitals across North Carolina. They also suggest the following extra precautions for visitors. Stay home if you're sick. Get vaccinated against flu, RSV, and COVID-19. Seek the appropriate level of care when needed. Yes, kids are getting flu very hard, so uh, yes, we can keep them away from other sick people at this time. That would be a really good thing. And of course, not this week, but next week, we'll start the winter classes of schools all across the United States and other places around the world. So we know there's going to be school illness outbreaks. Oh, it's going to be really busy Really busy times ahead here on the channel and for me posting on the website and over on my social media pages. All right, get this, Washington, D.C. now. Flu cases are accelerating in the D.C. region but have not yet peaked health data shows. Oh, this is not good. Yeah, get this, and there's something here I want you to see. In Virginia, flu-related emergency and urgent care visits more than doubled in a single week, climbing from 4,000 visits to nearly... 8,700 visits. State health officials say those numbers are well above what is typically expected at this point in the season. It's this rapid rise of flu. Washington, D.C. is seeing a similar trend. 
Nearly 700 flu cases were reported in just one week. And remember, a lot of people take these three-in-one tests, which include COVID, flu A, flu B, or they just don't test at all. So if they're reporting 700 cases, which come from doctor's offices, urgent cares, hospitals, um, Walgreens, CVS, other drugstores, you name it, imagine how many cases are being missed. Yeah, that means there's a lot of people sick right now. More than half of the respiratory samples tested by laboratories in the district came back positive for influenza. Whoa, that's a really high positivity rate. And they also mentioned Maryland. Maryland hospitals are already feeling the strain. More than 1,200 people statewide have been hospitalized with the flu this season. And nearly one in three tests is returning positives. None of this includes COVID, RSV, norovirus, pneumonia, which flu can lead to pneumonia, COVID can lead to pneumonia, and anything else in between. So it is really bad right now on the East Coast. And, well, we got more for the East Coast. Uh, now we got to move to Florida. Different kind of flu. We're talking about bird flu this time, where 12 swans were found dead at Lake Eola in Eola. I hope I'm saying that correctly. In Orlando. And this sparks avian flu outbreak concerns. Yeah, I don't think we need to repeat about that. Every time we see an outbreak, it's concerning. And we've been seeing outbreaks pop up all across the United States. All right, moving on now to this from a sci-fi. New U.S. reports COVID positivity increased the most in Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska to 5.5% as of December 20th. Again, we're working with lag data here. The highest since September 27th, U.S. and 40% of regions increased. U.S. 3.8% regions increased to 1.7 to 5.5 after revisions. Chicago's region increased to over 5.3%. That is uh, region number five. I actually got a map here that tells me all the CDC regions and HHS regions. So, yes, Chicago did go up, and things are uh, slowly starting to rise in the West Coast as well. You know, you've been in that law on the West Coast. That's coming to an end. The holidays are going to definitely rise things out in that area. We'll take a look at a couple of wastewater sites on the West Coast because we don't have a lot of news for the West Coast today. I was looking. Everything is behind at this time. All right. Gore Hospital. This is in New Zealand now. Gore Hospital COVID-19 outbreak. Remember, it's summertime now. Uh, outbreak halts new patient admissions and visitors. So they are dealing with an outbreak there at Gore Hospital over in New Zealand at this time. Alrighty, moving on. Do we have an update from Walgreens? Let's refresh this again. No, I think that's going to come in tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on with the air qualities in the United States. Let's do this out so it will show us the entire United States while we're waiting for that to reload. Let's pause and take a hydration break, shall we? Alrighty, water is the drink of choice today. You can see a few issues in the Mid-Atlantic. Not terribly concerned about that. Generally, aside from the West Coast, a lot better looking map today. But California on northward, yeah, still some problems there. I don't know why the sensors constantly keep showing bad air qualities there. I just don't understand it. All right, taking a look at this. Uh, Pinellas County, Florida is seeing quite a few calls. Look at this. We're seeing bed delays. We're seeing last time at hospitals. Yeah, it's not just there. It, I imagine it's happening across the entire United States at this point. And whoa. Okay, I got to pause for a second. We're taking a look at Maryland now. Look at this. We're not going to sit here and count the number of fours. We don't have time to do that. But, uh, wow, reroute, four. And for those who are new here, if you haven't seen this before, take a look. 131% of a bed of a hospital being occupied in the emergency department. So in other words, the emergency department is at 131%. It's just spewing out of control, over capacity. Maybe some people would be in the hallway at that point. And look at this, four, four, three, there, okay, there's a couple of ones. There's just so many hospitals listed out of, wow. This is the worst I've ever seen for Merrill. This is, I mean, I've looked at this dashboard for many, let's count how many hospitals are not four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, out of... I don't know how many are, are not fours. The rest of them are all fours. Maryland, your hospitals are 
filling up at this time. And you know what? That does spill over in here into Pennsylvania. That website's, yeah, I'll show you that in just a moment. Philadelphia on Sunday, 783 EMS incidents. I would be shocked if the number's not much higher today. 757 incidents on Saturday. Here's why I would be shocked. Montgomery County has just been slammed all day. Okay, 15. That's the lowest I've seen this number show since about 10, 10.30 this morning. It was back over 20 once again a few minutes ago. I've been seeing respiratory emergency listed several times. I've been seeing stroke, cardiac emergencies. Uh, it has been really bad. We actually did a YouTube short this morning on EMS traffic here. Yeah, take a look at this. Chester County, Pennsylvania is still extremely busy today. How about Bucks County, Pennsylvania? That's been busy all day. I hope it slowed it. It slowed down a little bit, but not good. And this is now resulting in problems in the hospitals. Look at this. A lot of yellow is showing up. Yes, this is not behavioral health issues. This is emergency department overcrowding. This uh, page is starting to update once again. Penn State Health Holly Spirit Medical Center. Emergency department is just overcrowded at this time. Overcrowding at Penn Medicine Lancaster General Hospital. And Southeast Pennsylvania, we have a real problem. Penn Medicine Chester County Hospital. High patient volumes. 15 inpatient borders mean Yes, there's probably people in the hallways at this point. Behavioral health issue there as well. Uh, take a look at this. This is today. High patient volume at Paoli Hospital. Or they call it Bryn Mawr. It's actually called Paoli Hospital. And here's Bryn Mawr Hospital. High patient volume there. We also have Lankinall Hospital dealing with emergency department overcrowding. And yes, we have yet another up, down in Upper Darby. Uh, Mercer Catholic Medical Center. Mercy Fitzgerald Campus. That is overcrowding as well. Now let's take a look at some new data that just came in from Pennsylvania today. And you do see here, COVID. Why well, it went down slightly. Overall, I think we're starting to trend upward. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that drop. Look at Southeast PA. There are now definitely places that are listed very high. That's on top of all the flu that we're dealing with here. This is COVID wastewater. Also a couple very high places in Western PA, South Central PA, and even up there along that I-81 corridor. Wilkes-Barre is very high. Scranton is just coming up at high at this time. And also, take a look at this. Influenza, rapidly rising in wastewater. RSV, big increase in wastewater this week. RSV is listed at moderate. Influenza A is listed at high across the state. And uh, COVID in Pennsylvania is now listed at high across the state. So, yes, we are definitely dealing with problems. All right, moving on. New Jersey does have several hospitals dealing with a problem. I need to refresh this. Patient volume issue at Central State Medical Center. They also have patient volume issue at Hunterton Medical Center. Inspire Medical Center, Mannington. Mollica Hill is doing a full and total divert. Uh, Jefferson Washington Township Hospital, full and total divert. Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, full and total divert. And now a psychiatric issue at University Hospital. You get the idea. These hospitals are full. If I could view uh, other parts of the country, if I could view the West Coast, I would gladly do that. Does anyone know if California has a page for something like this? I mean, they're pretty detailed with their respiratory virus data. you think they would have something. I would love to know what's going on there. I really would because this is a pretty serious what we're starting to uh, see here. I imagine other parts of the country, especially like Chicago area, uh, the positivity rates there are now really starting to go up. All right, let's take a look at New York State. 490 positive COVID tests on the most recent update. Again, that's down. That's because of the holiday. Uh, we'll probably see some catch-up. Maybe this data will backfill in, and we'll probably see COVID rise for another week or two, I, I think is what's going to happen. Yes, it shows downward, but I think after that we'll see a peak. Will we see a second peaking? in february like last year i honestly cannot answer that question i don't know what's going to happen going forward with uh covid flu for that matter i think will peak will it see a second peaking i don't know i cannot answer that question i do want to show you this for california uh they haven't updated recently but seasonal influenza activity is increasing in all california regions with a notable rise in test positivity among children hospitalizations are currently low but are expected to increase so i think they're going to see the hospital strain issue 
soon as well. A new H3N2 flu strain subclay K is causing an active early flu season with more cases. Yes, that is what's causing all these problems across the United States. RSV activity is increasing. COVID-19 remains low, but I think eventually that is going to come up there in California. All right, let's take a look at wastewater scan. Let's stick with the West Coast. Let's go up to Washington. Hey, apologies real quickly. You may hear the wind in the background during this whole video. There's nothing I can do about that. It is so windy out here. Matter of fact, we just had a gust over 20 miles per hour, and you can make the wind sound like it's howling outside. All right, back to wastewater. Snow Homish, Washington. The COVID positivity rate is low. Influenza A, hey, that's high. And that is continuing to go up. Did I say COVID positivity rate? COVID in wastewater is what I'm referring to. And you can see it's very low. Again, I think that's eventually going to come up. Influenza A is high. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus is medium at this time. And take a look real closely. That is starting to go upward. That's one virus. That and influenza A are two viruses I'm going to be watching as kids eventually go back to school, which uh, it's coming next week. We're going to eventually find out what's going on with all this data. And I do want to uh, mention something here. A lot of the data we're seeing, even on wastewater, is lag. You notice here we're seeing December 22nd. Today is December 29th. Las Vegas, COVID, that is starting to go upward a little bit. That's a place we'll keep watching. A lot of people will spend New Year's there. Uh, influenza A is high, and that's going up slightly. Norovirus is high, and that's starting to go up slightly as well. Continuing on with wastewater, let's do two more sites. Let's go down to Texas. I do see Garland, Texas. Am I saying that correctly? That's just north of Dallas. Everything else there is coming up. Great out, meaning there's no data. Uh, COVID is medium there. RSV is high and rising. Influenza A is high and rising. Influenza B is high. I am hearing, I think we had a comment on here on the channel. Sorry for not getting, catching up on the comments. I'm trying. It's the busiest time of the year, so I am trying. Uh, maybe today will be the day I'm fully caught up on comments. But I am hearing here, and I believe on social media as well, some people are getting flu A and flu B at the same time. It does happen in rare cases. It's not as common, but it does happen. Norovirus, medium at this time for this wastewater site. And let's go somewhere in the Midwest. How about we come up here to, oh, I don't know. Let's go to Michigan, shall we? Let's see what's going on at Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and we'll see what's going on there. COVID is high, and that's really going up. The Midwest has been getting hit hardest with COVID. Influenza A is high and rising. And wow, norovirus is really a pet at this wastewater site, and everything else is okay. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Monday edition of the virus update. We will have another virus update tomorrow. I was going to do uh, some special theme stuff as we're coming near New Year's. It just depends on how the news goes. I think tomorrow's going to be a really busy day. I may say that for New Year's Eve. Uh, we may go, I don't know, we may do like the most shocking revealing things we learned about COVID in 2025, something like that. Hey, we learned a lot of things this year. The one, I think the most notable one that comes to mind is COVID being able to cause cancer to return to people who have had it. Yeah, look it up. It's It, it can reactivate cancer cells. We'll do something like that other tomorrow or on Wednesday. Alrighty, folks, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. I will see everyone again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday afternoon. Thanks for watching.